the general approach uh, we follow in industry is we write programs and then we compile it and run it and test it, right? That's basically how we, we, we check the quality of programs. Uh, however, as you know, uh, testing is, is very difficult. You know, we may miss some, some parts. We may not have tested all possible input values. It's impossible to test all possible input, input values, right? If a program takes an integer, you can keep on trying for one, two, three, and so on. It will never stop. So at some point you have to stop, of course. Um, so how do we handle this kind of um, problem? Like testing is useful, but it's not exhaustive. Um, the idea is to do some kind of formal verification. So the, the technology itself is, is very old, right? It has been around since 1950 or so, uh, or even before. Uh, the goal is to verify correctness of programs. Uh, you have a program, you want it to verify the program works correctly against the specification. So I talked about specification during um, third lecture a little bit, you know. And uh, now I'll show you some concrete examples of how you could specify the behavior, how you could compare whether uh, the specification matches the implementation. Okay, that's basically what I'm going to talk about now. Any questions before I get into the details? Pharmacy itself is available online for folks to download and play with it. I believe, uh, Jeet, you have downloaded and, est and established a running version in the VM. You gave it right? Yeah, Professor. Right, okay. So, um, it will be... Uh, not possible for me to cover all the features of pharmacy. I'm going to touch upon a few selected items that I believe uh, valuable for you to know, not to say that others are not valuable, um, but in the given amount of time, um, what I'm going to talk about is how do you verify whether a C program is correct, okay? There are similar technologies for Java and other languages. Um, I will in fact talk to you about uh, .NET from Microsoft also uh, toward the end of this session. So let me start the idea of uh, pharmacy at a high level first. Okay, so um, pharmacy is a tool for formal verification. Um, you have the notion of a contract, you specify what the program should do. And the pharmacy tool uh, has a bunch of plugins. One of the plugins is called the WP plugin. It's called the weakest precondition plugin. It will check whether the contract that you specified matches the implementation, okay? So the plan for um, this session is to go over some details of uh, the WP uh, plugin, and then you will be able to execute this on the virtual machine Jeet had shared with you all. So you should be able to take the examples that I have on the slide, which we will upload, uh, and replicate whatever I am talking um, and see the behavior in um, in action. Okay. And I will I will not talk about a, a value plugin, which is an interesting plugin, but I will skip that. I will talk about the ACL language, that the C specification language used to develop the contract, and a little bit about EACL, okay? That's, that's the plan for today. All right, so uh, what is Pharmacy? Um, it's a framework for static analysis of C code. That's, that's the acronym, a very interesting acronym. <laughs> framework for static analysis of C language. Um, what it does is it takes your C code and builds abstract syntax trees, some kind of a, a data model um, which has the data flow of your code. And uh, it has a bunch of analysis plugins, right, to do static analysis. Um, the weakest precondition calculus is one of the analysis plugins that I'm going to talk about. You could also write your own plugins uh, to the Pharmacy framework. Okay, I never wrote anything like that, but uh, if you are interested and uh, if you find a, a, a plugin is needed, go for it, okay? Um, so main purpose is to do static analysis of C code. And I'm not going to talk about transforming the code because you can change your code from one structure to another structure, right? Using uh, a refactoring or something like that. The tool helps you to do that as well. Okay. Um, skip the uh, uh, camel part of it. We don't have to go there. So the Pharmacy platform itself is made of a lot of plugins, okay? Um, some of them are for static analysis. Some of them are for dynamic analysis, which means you run the code and then talk about the behavior, compare against the contract. Um, the, the most of the time that I'm going to spend is on this side, right? Static analysis uh, of your uh, C code using the WP plugin, okay? There are multiple plugins. WP is one of the plugins that I am interested in uh, for today's session. So I will talk about WP plugin today. All right. Um, we can move forward. So, uh, yeah, there's some some uh, marketing around pharmacy, right? People are able to extend the pharmacy and add their own plugins, whatnot. So I'm not going to talk about that now. Um, value analysis is uh, is very interesting plugin. 
um, suppose you have a piece of code and you would like to know what are the possible val values this particular variable can take, it will analyze and tell you using something called abstract interpretation techniques, okay? Uh, which, which is not going to be covered today. I will only talk about the WP plugin, okay? And there is something similar to WP that's called Jesse. So uh, I, I think Jesse is kind of um, deprecated now, as far as I know. So we'll only focus on the WP plugin. All right. So let's let's focus on from a C now. So what is it? How do we specify some things useful and how do we check it? Um, what you do is you write your C code as usual, right? However, you annotate the C code with some special commands, right? Like, like for example, uh, like a regular C command and uh, put an ampersand here, or at symbol, not ampersand, at symbol. The uh, from a C tool will parse your C command and it knows that, okay, you're specifying something as soon as it sees slash star at symbol, okay? This is how you specify your, your, your behavior, expected behavior. Uh, uh, using this ACL notation. ACL stands for a C specification language, that's all. Okay, it has lots of features. Um, not all uh, elements of ACL are understood by all the plugins. Um, you will see it later when you play with it, okay. Uh, what, what's happening with static analysis is that it doesn't really run the code per se, but on the other hand, dynamic analysis will run the code, right? So you could convert your uh, specifications into assertions, okay? Uh, the EACSL language will do that. It will take your uh, contracts like this and convert it into assert statements that you could run it at, at runtime and check whether certain runtime properties are true. So I'll show you some example in a moment. So this benefit is you could mix testing and verification, okay? If you use this technique, EACSL technique, okay? A little bit of uh, history which we can safely skip, I believe, okay? So um, there are lots of uh, plugins, as I mentioned to you, static analysis, dynamic analysis, and so on. Um, lots of manual, user manual available online if you go to the Pharmacy website. Uh, today I will only focus on the WP plugin uh, and I will show you some interesting examples that I, I think it's interesting. Okay. So um, it's developed in uh, France. Um, uh, Center for Atomic Energy Research or something like that, and uh, INRIA, which, uh, which is basically France's um, uh, elite research institute in computer science. Um, it's usually uh, uh, collaborating with some universities. Uh, um, Pharmacy is open source project um, available online from pharmacy.com. Uh, there's also Stuffport and o Stack Overflow and so on. Okay, anyway, I'll keep moving. And there's a blog which I find it interesting. So, so visit, do visit that. Okay. So why do we need to do formal verification? Here comes our famous example. <laughs> um, here is a little absolute function, right? That takes X as an input. It checks whether X is below zero. If it is true, it returns minus X. Otherwise it returns X. Seems mathematically correct. Nothing wrong. However, when we try X to be int min, it will fail. Okay. So uh, we know this from our uh, ENPM 691 course. The program is buggy for X is equal to minus uh, two power 31. Okay, so a tool like Pharmacy can catch that, okay? You, you write your program, say, and store it in a file called abs.c, absolute value.c. And from command line, you call Pharmacy, either Pharmacy GUI or Pharmacy, and, the, and then activate the weakest precondition plugin that's the WP plugin. And by adding this uh, flag, um, you are asking Pharmacy to generate assertions. One of the assertions is basically this, right? Assertion against runtime errors like signed overflow, underflow, and so on. And then it systematically checks whether there are mathematical errors in your code if you activate this portion, which I usually do. Um, and then this WP is you're calling the WP plugin. Okay. All right. Any questions before we move on further? Um, professor? Yes. The assertions were created by the tool itself. We do not That's have the right. tool. That's right. The tool inserts assertions for you. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, this is the uh, assertion inserted by the tool on their graphical user interface. So it generates the assertions and runs the to, uh, runs the uh, assertions as well at the same yes. time? Yes, it runs the assertion as well and it, it shows assertion is failed. For example, you see, you see here there's an, uh, kind of an yellow mark there, right? Yeah. At this point, it says this assertion is failed. Okay. 
Mm. Uh, you can also add assistance that this next step I will show you. At this point, the assistants are more programming oriented assistants, right? You know, overflow, underflow, that kind of thing. They, they are automatically populated. Professor, I have a question. Like, uh, Pankul just asked that, will the assertions be written by the tool itself? Yes. Or you be writing the uh, assertion saying that, okay, this is an integer and the value should not go more than that. Yeah. I answered the question saying that the tool will generate the assertions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So here's a little more complex example, right? Um, let's look at the structure. The structure uh, is an array of four elements and you have another element U. Okay. This is the basic C structure. We are all familiar with it. Um, v dot u equal to three, not a problem, right? You have a v, you can put a u, v dot u is three. However, look at the next line, v dot t of four. You know, in C language, array index starts from zero. So you have to stop at uh, three. So here by uh, accident programmer put v, uh, v dot t of four equal to four. So um, when you run this in C compiler, maybe it works correctly, right? You see here, for some reason it worked because you're just writing to the next array element in memory, uh, and it worked. Um, when you compile it with a different flag, sometimes it may be optimized, and it has <laughs> some other interesting effect. It corrupted the, the value of u, because u is next to, to t, right? Is that clear? Yeah. OK. So anyway, in any, any case, it's wrong, because it's, it's updating the value of u. <laughs> OK. So. Uh, from a C, I actually identify this. You see here, index bound, it automatically inserted an asset statement. This uh, right hand corner, yeah. it all automatically inserted. Wherever array index is used, it, it tries to uh, insert an asset statement saying the array index should be bounded by uh, the number four because that's what we declared it here, right? Okay. All right. This is basic C programming mistakes, right? Um, let's go to the next more advanced ones. Suppose you would like to specify contract more precisely and, and check automatically using the tool. The tool provides a syntax for specifying the contract. For example, you could say, I require something from the users of the function, but I will ensure certain behaviors. Okay, and that's basically requires and ensures contract. So let's, let's talk about an example. You know, absolute function requires an input, which should be uh, more than negative to power 31. Remember, we are talking about uh, number line on the negative side. That means it must be um, uh, minus two power 31 plus one and so on, right? That's, that's the absolute behavior, absolute value input behavior constraint. The value has to be more than int min. That's basically it. You don't put this number as it is. Uh, you put int min, they have a macro, uh, but, it, but here it's shown as a number. Okay, and what are, what are we expecting the program to do? And we expect the program to make sure that the result is greater than or equal to zero, right? So this ensures is a keyword, and the result is also a keyword, meaning the return value from a function is greater than or equal to zero, okay? So here is the deal. If you send in a negative number, right? And the, neg and the answer is just a minus of the negative number, right? If you send in a positive number, the answer is the positive number as it is. Any questions so far? So where do you have to define these uh, contracts? Is it another file? Just specify uh, in your C code, uh, like a regular command. You see here, there's a little... Um, um, yeah, add the rate sign. So the tool will pass this, this um, uh, block of commands, and it says, okay, I expect the input to be um, more than or equal to the int min, yeah. uh, or int min plus one, sorry, int min plus one. Um, and then uh, the result has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's what we are ensuring. If you send in an X less than zero, you will get back a minus x. If you send in an x greater than or equal to zero, you'll get back your x as it is. That's the contract of the absolute function. You specify that. This, this is what a programmer would specify. Otherwise, the, the tool has no idea what are you writing, I guess, of course. So um, here, is the, um, here is the actual code, right? This is the code that you would wrote. Uh, you normally would write um, when you're writing an absolute function code. And here is the extra work you have to do to help the tool to verify the correctness. Okay, and now um, the tool will check whether uh, this code matches these, these two lines, essentially, that's all, the three lines. Any question? No, but... For all possible exits, very fine, okay? You may say, well, this is just a lot of work to write those lines, but uh, again, it helps you to think through what the program is doing. 
and later you will see that when absolute is called in some other place um, you actually can hide the complete details the tool will only use these these three lines to reason about in a composition way okay so sort of model verification it assumes a correctness by using the ensures uh, statement and then build upon higher level contracts okay and i'm going to show you some more detailed um, um, more complex rather than just a couple of line code okay so what's happening here under the hood your code gets transformed into another code and um, you can actually even generate uh, um, runtime contracts like this if you wanted to run it you see here all of these are automatically plugged in for you sometimes in production you would like to run assert statements you don't write it manually these things these things are inserted for you based on whatever you wrote here does it make sense yes professor okay all right so let's move on to the next part so the the, the tool can be used from command line as well as from the graphical user interface uh, if you call from us see with the from us see minus gui and specify the wp plugin and specify the name of the code uh, the name of the file then it will show you a screen like this it will show you a green button on the left hand side wherever uh, all the assertions are verified and it will show different colors depending on whether it's successfully able to verify and something not able to verify it will show different color okay you cannot edit it this is more of a static editor okay this is just to view the the output as far as i know all right any questions on this um the the usual practice is that you don't write all of the code ensure contract at once right you can start with simple first you can start with ensure result is greater than or equal to zero um and then you can add more behaviors and then add more contracts so it's sort of iteratively developing the the code and the contracts as you go along okay okay here is the well let's skip the value plugin we don't need to go to the value plugin i will skip the value plugin okay um let's let me show you some details now okay we can even use pointers by the way um let's take a look at the swap function okay that's swapping two integers values a and b but a and b are not numbers they are pointers now right you wanted to change the content of a with the content of b and vice versa what you require is that the pointers are valid pointers you know it cannot be some garbage right it has to point to some valid values uh, valid address so requires is is basically the constraint called precondition that you are you are imposing on the callers they better send you valid pointers that's basically the valid keyword and the ensure spin it specifies the contract like the old value of a becomes the new value for b and vice versa so that's that's what this particular program will ensure for you the swap function right so let's look at the complete code now so this is something you are all exposed to right how to swap two numbers you have a temporary variable you take the value of the temp uh, uh, one of the address and put it into temporary variable and therefore you can update now a by the value at b and b by the value from temp that you know it already so how do you specify what the swaps should do is this you expect a valid pointer for a and b and then you expect and then you say the program will ensure that um the the new value of a is same as the old value of b and the new value of b is same as the old value of a old is something that was passed to you before even the code got executed right that's basically the old syntax so these things are part of keywords the library understands the, the from ac ac acsl the ac specification language allows you to specify these things okay so let me pause here and answer any questions you may have 